First John, fourth chapter. Hallelujah. I got one hallelujah back. <laughs> hallelujah. Boy, y'all so far, y'all gonna be in the dust. <laughs> I think I got one hallelujah back. That was callous. <laughs> hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I've been there. We come to the house of the Lord. We ought to give him the sacrifice of pray with the fruit of our lips. Get this out. Amen. Go ahead and turn to your neighbor and say, don't be so quiet. We know you ain't that quiet. But your talk itself. <laughs> Time you get in the presence of the Lord, you want to be all quiet. You better open up your mouth and give God some praise. Everybody already know how much you talk. <laughs> Amen. Isn't it amazing how, how you come to church and we can get so quiet in the house of the Lord? Amen. Amen. But I think this is where we ought to we ought to come before him and we ought to give him glory with the fruit of our lips. Can this out? Amen. And that and that not ought to be a program thing. That everything that have breath ought to be praising God. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but God, God is worthy of praise. Can this out? Amen. He's worthy of praise. Amen. I was, I was kind of like doing my devotional time today, and I was thinking about, you know, you know, in this, in this world today, let me, tell you, let me tell you what it's not a time to do. It's not a time to get cold. It is not a time to get cold. It's not a time to get worldly. You know, many people think about worldliness. They're thinking about going back out in the bars and drinking and smoking. But how many know you can be in church and be worldly? And the, being worldly, the Bible says the world is the, the desires, loving the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes. And many times when we quote this scripture, we think about sexual activities and, you know, smoking drugs and going on the street doing this, going to clubs. But, but the, Bible, the Bible says that, you know, and it, it, it really is it's kind of like an alert time for believers, especially if we've been saved a certain amount of time. We can get so worldly. And that simply means that I'm concerned about my desires, if I don't feel like it. In other words, listen, if I don't have his desires in heart and in mind, then I'm going to have my own desires. Okay? All right. Now, if I don't have his desires, his desires, that's why the Bible said, delight ourselves in the Lord. Delight ourselves in the Lord. Amen. And that's just not just coming to church. The Bible said in the last days that, that's why we have to be careful. In the last days, the love of many is going to do a white coat. The love of many. They're not talking about unsaved people. It's talking about saved people, church people, believers. And the scripture says that. Say the love of many is your white coat. And I've been saved now, going to like 38, 40 years now. And, and I, you know, you have to be, you have to be aware of the stage that you are living in. You, you can't allow the enemy just to fan you asleep. Now you're no more concerned about people being saved. Now you're no more concerned about the church growth or, or people being encouraged or the saints of God. We, we have th this agenda is no more, you know, it, it used to be high on our, on our list. But now, you know, it, we don't calm down. You know, I'm in here and I'm just cruising on in. And that, it's a time now. That's a dangerous position to be in. Amen. That's a dangerous position to be in. There was a time when we were witnessing, we would tell people about the Lord Jesus, but you know, now we, we come to church and coming to church don't take the place of winning souls. Right? Amen. Amen. I mean, I might not, listen, I might, listen, I'm going to, you know, I thank God. Uh, he, he laid it on my heart for, for a purpose and, and being your overseer. And I believe, I believe God wants to bring an alertness to you. Amen. Yeah, not just coming to church. Not just, you know, I'm, I'm in here, you know, I come to church and I throw up my hand for a few hours, then I go home, then I, t I take care of no other agendas but mine. And I'm thinking about my house, you know, how much money I got, you know, with the bills, and that's it. And I don't, I don't, I don't, you know, here, this is what the Bible says in, in, in my devotion time. The Bible says that, and watch what I'm about to say. Watch what I'm about to say. The Bible says that the harvest is plentiful. And that's what Jesus was talking to the, the woman at the well. He said the harvest is plenty. In other words, there's a lot of people out there that need to be saved. 
There's a lot of people that need to be saved. There's a lot of people that need the gospel preached to them. So the harvest is plenty. Check what the text says, though. He said the harvest is plenty, but laborers are few. Laborers are few. It's hard to find. I'm talking about believers. I ain't talking about, you, know, you ain't worried about no sinner working for Jesus. He said laborers are few. He's talking about believers. And let me tell you something. All, all saved people ain't laborers. We're supposed to be. Amen. When God saved you, he saved you to, to be an ambassador for him. We're supposed, to be, we're supposed to be representing Jesus on the earth. We're supposed to be his voice. If somebody hear the gospel, they're they supposed to hear the gospel through us. There's no angel going to preach the gospel. Jesus is not coming back preaching the gospel. If, if anybody going to hear the gospel, they got to hear the gospel through us. Amen. Amen. And the text says it like this. You know, and, 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 you know, my heart kind of breaking. And I see things, and I'm, you know, I'm in the church. I'm in the midst of the church. And, and, and I, I believe that that's why the Bible said, the dog of in the church said, let, let those that are in church, let them hear what the Spirit has to say to the church. The Spirit of God is, is saying a, a certain word to the church. And that's why it's not good for believers not to be in the midst of church. You know, you say you could get home or people get so so unpassionate about God, they don't even care if they come to church or not. Especially weeknight services, that don't even matter to some people. I see you Sunday morning. No. You ain't got to shout me down. I'm preaching good. <laughs> but, but, but it's a dangerous position when, you find, when we find ourselves in a position where we don't love what God loves. I don't like this position. I'm telling you, I, and, I, and, I, and you know, I experience it in my life. I see the enemy try to come up in my life. I don't like the position where well, I'm all day long, I'm just thinking about my agenda. I don't like that position. I don't like that position. I don't like the position where I sit around and think about, you know, just doing me, doing my thing, not witnessing to anybody, not, not, not taking out time, praying, talking to God. You know what I mean? I, I don't like that position. And, I, and I'm going to tell you, it's a position that the enemy, he'll get you in. He'll fan you to sleep there. And you'll find yourself sleep in that position. How, how many you know, you ever heard about sleepwalking? That what you got a lot of saints doing, they sleepwalking. You ain't got fan to sleep in a certain position. Well, I'm saving, and I'm coming to, I come to church on Sundays, and I come to church, you know, and that's it. But take what the scripture says. It says, and I, and I make this in my daily prayer, I'm praying for laborers. I'm praying for people that want to see other people saved. Y'all, I know y'all gonna, you ain't going to shout me down too much tonight, but that's hard to find, even in the body of Christ. Hard to find when you got a, a saint and a, a, a saint that loved Jesus so much that they, they, their heart is for people to be saved and for the church to be strengthened. And they, they just, they want to bless the, the, the peoples of God. That's, that's not an easy thing to find in this day, in this hour. Amen. Oh, you'll find our church packed on Sunday. You know, you got, they got the biggest church out there in Houston. I mean, the church packed with 30,000 people. That church packed on Sundays. And look like to me, with that many people, you should be able to win the world. You know, we'll come to church on Sunday morning, and that's what I'm saying, even with us. I don't want to go out, but I'm just, I'm just trying to paint a picture here to, to show you something. You know, and we'll come to church, and we'll throw our hands up. We'll say amen to the preacher. I like it's such a powerful thing. And when we get out the, out, outside of the building, now we're not ambassadors for him because our desires are not, or it's not like his desires. He wants God wants people to be saved. Amen. God wants people to be saved. Now, if that desire ever died in you, believe me, if that desire ever died in you, if you ever had that desire and that desire ever died out in you, believe me, now it's, it's has, it, it, your desire has switched. And I know you're good. I ain't talking about how good you are. Your desire has switched from, from a, a, a spiritual desire. And I bet you're checking out, you, you're doing some stuff on, on your own now. Well, I'm, 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 I'm preparing for a new house. I'm going to get my family another car. I'm, 
uh, I'm doing something for myself. Okay? So, I, I want to talk about, I want to talk about, just give me another 10, 15 minutes and I'm done. I want to talk about, now, you know, I want to talk about this word that we talk about all the time. And, 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 and this word is in the first, first John, fourth chapter. And let's start reading from the ninth verse. See if I can do this in 15 minutes. Ninth verse. And this was manifested the love of God towards us. I want you to underline, underline the word love every time I read it, please, if you just pay attention to it. And this was manifest the love of God towards us. Now, this God loving us, right? Because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that he might live through him. Tenth verse. Herein, herein is, is, is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be a perpetuation for our sins. All right. Love and verse. Beloved, if God so love us, we are also to love one another. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwells in us. And his love is perfected in us. The word perfected there is complete. Complete in us. Hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. Amen. That says, thank God for the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's how we know he dwells in, in us and we in him because he has given us his spirit. Say amen. 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 Turn to your neighbor and a believer. Just turn to your neighbor and say, hey, believer, thank God for the spirit of God in you. Can you say Amen. I start to say something else, but you know, a lot of believers don't even know that they have the Holy Spirit. You know that? They don't even recognize that they have the Holy Spirit. So do it one more time. Turn to believers. Say, hey, believer. Thank God for the Spirit that lives in you. Amen. Amen. Okay. Now, so it says, um, what verse does that stop? 13th verse. Hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the father sent the son to be the savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the son of God, dwell, God dwelleth in them, in him or in her, and he, and he in God. And we have known and believed that love we have known and believed the love that God has to us. And I like this. Line. God is. Okay. God is what? Love. And, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. Let me make a statement before we read the last part of the verse. Let me make a statement. Many times we'll talk about this word love. And we define the word, let me say this to you. There is, there is no way with our own natural thinking, with our own natural thinking, that we can define the word love. We can't define the word love, not biblically. Most times, we define the word love as an emotion of feeling. That's how we define the word love. Have you ever heard this statement? You know, I love you, but I'm not in love with you. I don't know where y'all get that from. <laughs> there is no way that you can love me and not be in love with me. And, and if you said that, then you don't know what love is. You think love is an emotional feeling about somebody. You think love, well, if I don't feel good about you, then I don't love you. Let me ask you a question. Do you think you, you thought you thought that God felt good about us when he was dying on the cross? And when we were sinning against him, the Bible said Jesus died while we were yet his enemy. So the scripture calling this, that, the scripture is saying God loved us. It was not an emotion of feeling. He loved us. Now, I don't know how you, you feel about it, but you know, 
I mean, you know, before I, before I utter, utter up out of my mouth and I tell God I, I love him, I know my conscience, but, 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 I need to, but, but I need to know what love is. You know what I mean? I, I want to know the God kind of love. I don't want to. I want to sit in church and just read these scriptures and then not really understand what 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 love is. There, and there's no way that again I'm gonna say this. And there is no way with our own with our own thinking. There is no way that we can grasp a hold on on love. Not not the God kind of love. I don't care how much we try to think about love. How many how much feeling we have. How much goofing we have. There is we, we can't we can't grasp a hold on the love that God is talking about in the scripture. Now the only way we can grasp a hold of that we got to read the scripture and God has to reveal love to us. Amen. All right. Now, now, so, so, now, now, in the 16th verse he said, and we, and we have known and believed the love that God has to us. Then it said God is what? Everything God does, he does it in love. God, don't, don't, God doesn't do anything outside of love. Because he can't, because he is love. Okay? When God chastening us, he's doing it in love. God don't curse people. How can, you, how can he be love and he curse you? I don't know y'all in there. You know, believers think God be cursing people. God, how, how can love curse anybody? If he is love, how can he curse somebody? He's love. Okay, now, now, I, I want to give you a good illustration about the love of God. Maybe because when I, when I you know, I'm kind of looking into the scripture, and when I saw it like that, you, some of you probably heard me minister a little bit, but when I saw it like that, it opened up my, my insight, my love, my, my insight about, about love. Now, look what it says. It says, 16, 17 verse, herein is our love made perfect. Uh, herein is our love made perfect. Herein is our love made perfect. The word again is complete. That we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Okay? Herein, herein is our love made perfect. Not that we love God, but that he loved us. Herein the love of God is going to be made perfect and complete. We're not getting to heaven because we love God. It's because he loved it us. Amen. Now I'm going to say that again. You ain't going to heaven because you love God. Well, we're going to heaven because he loved us. Amen. And so the Bible says, you're gonna, we're going to read it in the text. He said, because he first loved us, then, then we in turn show him how much we love him. 17 verse, herein our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, so are, are we in this world. Watch this. This is my verse. There is no fear in love. Watch that. That's tough stuff right there. There is no fear in love. Another word for fear is intimidation. Okay? Ain't no fear in love. Anywhere there is intimidation, ain't no love there. Okay? I'm, I'm, I'm coming in on this one now. I say, anywhere there is intimidation, ain't no love there. Here in the text is saying, there is no fear in love. Let me give you a good illustration. Have you ever seen a man try to make a woman love him by controlling her? Mm -hmm. Trying to put fear in her, so he's saying that he's going to make her love him. Ain't no love nowhere in there. No love is in intimidation. The only reason why she's doing what she's doing is because she's scared of you. Amen. Okay, let's turn it around because I see all the women looking at the men. I'm like, yeah, that's right. Okay, you women too. Y'all got a manipulating problem too. Y'all try to control men and make them love you. You ain't showing me that you love me, so I'm going to hold back for you. Or I'm going to manipulate you. You ain't showing me that. Um, then the only reason why the man, the only reason why the man doing that for you because you know you're going to hold back on him. Or you're going to plot. Or you ain't going to say nothing to him. Or you're going to act the crazy. So he do it because he know you controlling him. Ain't no love in that. Ain't no love in intimidation. Amen. Ain't no love in controlling 
Okay? Ain't no love in control. It. That's why, you know, that's why, you know, when we get around our house, that's why we got to watch how we treat one another. Because now you got to watch how you treat your wife. Watch how you treat your husband. Watch how you treat your brother and your sister. Some people won't do nothing for you unless they think that they're going to get something back. That ain't no love. You know what I mean? Only reason why some people do things for you because they think they're going to get something back from you. And then they call that love. I gave you this because I love you. Yeah, when I give you this. So therefore, ain't, 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 no, ain't no fear in love. There is no intimidation in love. Let me give him a good illustration. I'm going to do this as quick as I can so I can move. Let me give you a good illustration. No fear in love. Now watch, let's, let's finish reading the verse. He said, there is no fear in love, but perfect love does what? Cast down intimidation. The God kind of love cast down intimidation. I don't do this because I'm afraid of you. I do this because I love you. I don't do this because you're doing this for me. I do this because I love you. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not doing what I do for you because, you know, I'm, I'm thinking that you're going to get back at me. I'm doing what I do for you because I love you. Okay. So it said because fear, watch this, uh, but perfect love casts out fear. Perfect love casts out intimidation. Right? Because fear has what? Torment. Okay. Fear has what? Torment. And where there's tormenting, where there's tormenting, there is no love there. Amen. He that feareth, watch this, he that feareth is not made perfect in who? In love. And God is what? Love. We love him because he first loved us. So ain't no fear in love. Let me give you my last thing for tonight. Remember when God created the heaven and the earth, God created all the angels, the cherubim, the seraphim, and all those things. He, the celestial world, the terrestrial world, and all that. God created. Before man got here, it was a heavenly host. It was, it, the earth was covered. Heaven was covered. You follow what I'm saying? It, it was heavenly beings before, before you got here. Okay. So now God has, now God may remember there was no Satan. There was no devil. There, there was no devil. His name was Lucifer. And Lucifer actually, Lucifer actually means what, son of the morning? Hmm. So he had a brilliant name. And the Bible said God created him. Check me out. Now I'm going to go slow so you can get there. God created him. He, when he created him, he was perfect in wisdom, perfect in beauty. Okay? Perfect in wisdom. He was perfect in beauty. And God, in the book of Ezekiel 14, chapter 10, that God created him in his breath. God created him with, with an orchestra. When he opened up his mouth, an orchestra would come out and call the whole creation, not just, no, the whole creation knows what time it is when Lucifer opened up his mouth. They know that it's time now to worship God. All right, to worship God. All the angels, all the cherubim, all the seraphim, everything, every, all the creation of God. Now, when Lucifer, that was his job. His job was to open up his mouth and let all the creation know it's time to worship our God. So when he opened up his breath, opened up his mouth, that's what happened. Now, until pride came in, he don't forgot about who created him. He don't forgot about who made him like he was. He, he has forgotten that God was the one that created. Now, he's looking at the thing like, hey, when I open up my mouth, everybody bow down. Boy, I'm bad. Nobody can do this like me. I. 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 I'm bad. I can do this. So when I open up my mouth, ain't nobody got a gift like mine. Amen. He done forgot about who gave him the gift. Amen. He forgot about who created him. So he says, watch this. He says, I'm going to exalt my throne. Let me ask you a question. What throne did he have? When you start talking about I, you, then you start thinking that you got some kind of dominion. Amen. He said, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. All right, I'm going to be better than God. So I'm, I'm going to be battling God. These people going to bow, these, these seraphim, angels, angelic hosts, they're going to bow down and worship me. I'm going to be better than God. I'm going to have more 
more angelic beings, angelic hosts. I'm going to have more of them worshiping me than they are of God. And then when God heard about it, when God heard about it, turn to your neighbor, do me a favor, turn to your neighbor, tell him, say, God ain't got no competition. Tell him it was not a big struggle. Wasn't no God and Satan fighting. It, God has no competition. Jesus said, I saw Satan fall like lightning. That's quick, isn't it? Jesus said, I saw Satan falling like lightning. Okay. So when Satan, when Lucifer sinned it, now when he sinned it, now all the angelic hosts, all the seraphim, all the cherubim, now they they looking at God in another light. Fear has came upon the whole heavenly host. Wow. He sinned at one time, and that's what happened to him. Look at what God did. God cast, God cast Lucifer out forever. That was it. He couldn't be saved no more. Amen. It was it. He was cast out. He couldn't be in God's presence anymore. That was it. Don't you, now the whole heaven, the whole, all the angelic beings, they watching this, and all of a sudden now, when they see God in love, now they're seeing God in a different light. They seen God now, and they are afraid of Him. They scared. They fear God. There was no fear in love. Are you following me? Ain't no fear in love. Other word now, now, the angelic host and all the other angels now. They, they trembling in themselves. They scared. Now they say, well, I'm going to serve God because he's going to do something to me. I don't want to be in that. I don't want to be like Satan. He gonna, I'm scared. Ain't no, ain't no, there is no fear in love. God did not want his angelic host. God did not want his heavenly beings to, to worship him or to see him in that light. God wanted them to see him as love. So now the whole, everybody walking around in fear. And everybody walking around in torment. So ain't no, they don't see God as love. Remember the text that God is what? But they don't see love. Now they, don't, they, they see judgment. Because they don't see the move that God done bust on this guy. On, on Lucifer. So how did God rectify that? He created man. He created us. Sinners. <laughs> he created us. And then now the whole angelic host knows that God can't stand sin. But yet you sin thousands of times. We sin like crazy. And he still loves us. And the text says it like this. The whole angelic host. Now they stand around in awe of the love of God. Because they saying, them people doing all that and you still love them? Look what they do and you still love them. Seeing day after day after day after day, time, generation after generation, and you still love them. So the angelic host and the angels and the heavenly beings, they standing in awe at the love of God. You were created to bring the heavenly host to a place of, of, of awe. Go ahead and tell the neighbor, God love me. <laughs> Go ahead and tell him. I'm not worthy of his love, but he loved me. Uh, yet while we were sinners, Christ died for us. He loved us. Even when we were his enemy, God loved us. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm, I'm finding out what love is. Somebody tell me what love got to do with it. Everything, isn't it? Love got everything to do with this. I'm glad that God loved me. And I'm glad he don't love me with a natural love. I'm glad he don't love me with a humanistic love. Because that humanistic love, boy, you, the people will love you as long as you do them right. <laughs> Your joker will fall out with you, boy. By the, hey, the one that you thought that, come on, talk to me here. People that you thought that loved you, they told you, I'd never leave you. And I low we, we wall, pray with you, hung out with you. And bless God, time you don't do something, time you don't do like they want you to do, then you can't find them. How many know God got perfect love? 
God wants us to operate in perfect love. Can this add amen? God is love. He can't help but to love us. Can this add amen? The love of God, the love of God, can, amen, because the love of God is in us, the Bible says it constrains us to go towards God. It pulls on us. I don't, know, I don't know if you feel the pulling, but it pulls on me. Because the love God has for me, it pulls on me. Amen. When I probably would do some crazier things than I, <laughs> but the love of God pull on you. Amen. Amen. The love of God, it constrains you. Don't, don't it? I want, you know, I'm not talking to saints. And you ever sense the love of God in your life? And you can throw your head up and say, listen, boy, if, if, if I didn't sense the love of God, I'd done some crazy stuff. Crazy and that you tell me you think I'm crazy or not, but you didn't let me feel that love that's on me. That thing constrained you. Doesn't it constrain you? Can this out amen? The love of God constrain you. The love of God and and, and 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 here's the thing. God do not want us. Listen, ain't ain't there is no there is no intimidation in love. God don't want you serving him because you're scared of him. Not good stuff. God said he had to change the angelic host mind. He had to change the angelic being mind. So he created man, which was sinful and sinners. They knew how to sin. And then the Bible said, in the midst of them being sinners, God, listen, God didn't kill them. Now, you know, <laughs> amen. The moment Lucifer sinned it, what God did? Got him out of his presence. He was done. And couldn't, and, and couldn't be saved. And still can't be saved. Amen. I don't know how you feel about the love of God, but the more I think about his love, the more I can operate in his love. And then that, that's, why, that's why the following verse says this. That's why the following verse says, and look at the, uh, the 1920 verse and I'm done. We love, say we love him because he first loved us. That's right. We love him because he first loved us. We love him because he... I said, we love him because he first loved us. If he hadn't loved us, we wouldn't know nothing about loving him. Amen. So we love him because he first loved us. And while we were crazy doing our own thing and, and acting foolish and sin after sin after sin, God still loved us. Unconditionally, didn't he? And the angelic host, remember this, that the, all the angels, they still sit around now and are. Ah, that's why the text says, like, what is man that thou so mindful? Uh, that's the first, where is that? In the book of Psalms. Uh, what is man that thou so mindful of him? Look how crazy this guy is. And that's what the angelic beings are saying. What is man that thou so mindful of him? The son of man that you visited him. God, God showing the angelic being by coming dwelling with us. Don't you know God living in us? He lives in us. He made his dwelling place in us. God, he that's love. Isn't that love? Hey, Amen. Yeah, that's the verse, boy, right there. That's three, that's th three and one, first John. What man of love the Father had lavished on us. The word is bestowed. Yeah, but the word actually means lavished. God, that's good. You know, when you lavish somebody in something, I mean, you, from head to toe, lavished. The Bible said, what man of love the Father has bestowed upon us, lavished on us, that we should be called the sons. Sinners called sons. Imperfect people called sons of God. Hallelujah. Go ahead, turn to your neighbor and tell them I'm a son, I'm a son. Even if you're a daughter, you're still a son. You just simply mean that you're a child. We understand gender, female, and male, but you're a son. Say amen. And just go and tell them again, I'm a son of God. Mm, I act like it sometimes. I ain't no child of the devil. I'm a son of God. Sometimes I act like the child of the devil, but, I, <laughs> but because of his love. Hallelujah. I say because of his love. Hallelujah. He's made me a son. Amen. He loves us and regardless of. He loves us in spite of. Our God is love. Can you shout amen? Let me tell you what the I, this this is this is it. And I started from I started from don't you? The Bible said, in the last days, watch what the text said. It said the love of many shall wax. What's gonna wax cold? The love. The love of many people are not gonna love God like they used to love Him. Not willing to be ambassadors like they used to. You not witnessing the people. When, when the Bible says love God, it, it's not talking about emotional stuff. People of God, 
It's not talking about have goosebumps. It's not talking about, you know, just have goosebumps. When it's talking about loving God, it means love what God loves. And God loves people. God loves the kingdom. Believe it, we should be excited about the kingdom. Can this out? Amen. I mean, anybody that's saving, you don't love the church, I question your salvation. I'm just telling you that now. Man, because if you love God, the love of God will abide in you, and you're going to love God's people. Because that love that's, amen, somebody. I mean, you're just going to love the, the peoples of God. you already going to understand, because of the love of God in you, that your inheritance is among those that are sanctified. And you're not even going to feel, you know, fear and likes among those that are not saved. Amen. So be careful and stay alert. Don't let your love wax cold. This is the last days. This is the last days. And the enemy desire to fan us to sleep. So now he wants to intimidate us. Oh, that's good. He wants to intimidate us by not talking about Jesus. Mm -hmm. They're all on TV, Hollywood. They don't want you to talk about anything you want, but don't say nothing about Jesus. And saints just falling asleep. Ain't nobody witnessing no more. And people, I like, we as saints, I like, we scared to witness in the restaurant. I don't care how they think about me. I just got a company in the restaurant. I just, I had a whole crew back there witnessing. It didn't matter what color they were. White, black, Hispanic, I had a whole crew back there. And I preached this message to them before I came and preached it to you. That's the love of God. Amen. And God lives in us. He lives in us. Hey, don't, don't, don't fall asleep, beloved, beloved. Don't fall asleep. Don't let the enemy fan your sleep. And you just in church. Hey, don't, let me tell you something. You get idle about the things of God, the devil will use you. The devil loves to use holy people. He does, man. He does. He loves to use holy people. And I say this to us all the time. You know, the enemy want to use, you want to use people that are anointed because he knows that, uh, you know, people that are anointed, he knows that God has placed an influence on your life. So he wants to kill that influence that God placed on your life. Get this out, amen. Fall in love with God. Watch me now. Fall in love with God over and over again. You can fall in love with him by loving what he loves. Amen? Thank you very much.